Good morning, class. It is my hope that you are going on well. Today we continue with this topic of circles and concentrate on chords and tangents. This is a very important area and also one of the most tested areas in KCSC. You can see the many questions that are there under this topic uh, in KMF. We will basically go through the summary. We will not be able to do the constructions at this point. Uh, I will teach you those things when we go back to, to school uh, because of the, the details involved. The objectives of this topic, as you can see, set by a neck are as follows you need to be able to calculate the length of an arc and a chord some of these things you already know you should also be able to calculate the length of a tangent and also intersecting chords you should be able to state and use properties of chords and tangents you should be able to construct tangent to a circle that one we'll do later you should be able to construct direct and transverse common tangent to two circles. We'll do we'll also do that one later. You should be able to relate angles in alternate segments. We'll do that here. You should be able to construct circumscribed, inscribed, and inscribed circles. I know you have no problem with some of these, especially circumscribed and inscribed. Should be able to locate centroid and all the center of a triangle. We will do that. You should be able to apply the knowledge of circles and tangents in a real life situation. I hope you should be able to do that. Uh, let's look at internal intersecting circles. So we have, um, as you can see, Two intersecting chords, sorry, not circles, chords. AB and PR, they intersect at Q. How do you get the, the, the unknown? As a rule, AQ multiplied by QB is equal to PQ multiplied by QR. You can see we are starting from one point on the circumference to the point of intersection. Then from the point of intersection to the other point on the circumference. And that is the rule. Whether we are using internally intersecting chords or externally intersecting chords, the rule is the same. It doesn't matter how the question is framed. We start from one point on the circumference to the, inter the, the point of intersection. Then from the point of intersection to the other point on the circumference. So AQ multiplied by QB is equal to PQ multiplied by QR. As I had pointed out, the same for externally intersecting chords. AQ times QB is equal to PQ times QR. From one point on the circumference to the point of intersection. From the point of intersection to the other point on the circumference. It is always like that. It doesn't matter whether you have been given a question on, on internally intersecting codes or externally intersecting codes. Well, I would like you to look at these examples. You can work them out on your own before you continue with the video. You can pause the clip and um, look at it. If AB is 8 centimeters and uh, BC is 6 centimeters, PQ is given as 16 centimeters, uh, find the length of PB. Pause the clip and uh, try to do using the the the, the the formula from one point on circumference to the point of intersection multiply by 
point of intersection to the other point on the circumference. See whether you can be able to do it and uh, compare the answer given as the clip continues. Here is the working for that. There, let PB be X and BQ will become 16 minus X because the whole length of uh, of, of the code uh, PQ was 16. So as you can see, PB times BQ is equals to AB times BC. So X multiplied by X minus, sorry, x multiplied by 16 minus x is equals to 48 and there you form a quadratic equation and you can rearrange it until you get x squared minus 16x plus 48 is equals to zero solve that and you get two answers either x is 12 or x is 4. Um, just go through that working see whether it's correct if there is any issue you can make corrections but that's the way it's supposed to be done. This is another example. You can also pause the clip and do it. Find the length of BC. Given AB is 9, PQ is 5, and QC is 4. So find the length of BC. Use the example given there. From A to C, multiply by C to B is equal to P to C, multiply by C to Q. But follow that and see what you will get. Again, the working is shown here. Uh, you can go through it. Let BC be X. So AC times CB is equal to PC times CQ. Uh, if BC is X, then uh, AC will be 9 plus X. So 9 plus X multiplied by X is equal to 36. So you form again another quadratic equation. You will get that X is either 3 or negative 12. We ignore negative 12 because there's no way that you can have the length being negative. So x is equals to 3. At that point, I would like you to know that it is not always that you get a quadratic equation. It is only that my two examples are giving you quadratic equations. But it depends on what you have been given. But the common thing is the way you arrange your work from one point on the circumference to the point of intersection multiply by the point of intersection to the other point on the circumference it is always the same no matter the way you look at it so you may not do a question and get a quadratic equation like we have here as you will see in the next example so here uh, we have codes and tangent intersecting. We have a tangent, AB, maybe not very well drawn, but it's supposed to be a tangent at A. Then we have a code, PQ, and AB and PQ are intersecting at B, externally intersecting. We still follow the same method from the point on the circle conference to the point of intersection then from the point of intersection to the point on the circumference in this case pb multiplied by bq will give you what it will give you ab multiplied by ba there you are so when you simplify that you will get pb multiplied by bq is equals to AB squared. So I would like you to do this question. It has not been done, but I would like you to do it and see the kind of an answer you will get. And I hope you will notice that you will not get a quadratic equation in this case. It's just a simple 
linear equation, get a square root and solve. And even if you get a square root here, you don't take the negative part of a square root. Here we are, the length of an arc. This one, I'll just give you the formula or remind you the formula. Actually, I'm not giving you, I'm just reminding you. How do you get the length of an arc? It is angle over 360 multiplied by the circumference to pi r. Angle here, theta, is the angle that is subtended by the arc. You can do more examples on that. I don't really have to take you through that. I know you know these things right from Form 1. This is one new concept you learned in Form 3. Angles in alternate segment. We talk about two segments here. I had talked about segment in the previous review of uh, angle properties of a circle. If you look at code BD, code BD has formed two segments. We have the segment BED, the big one, which we call the major segment. And then we have the minor segment, the smaller one, BD. So that angle in the minor segment is angle b sorry angle dbc that is the angle which is subtended by the code bd and the tangent abc and we normally say that the angles subtended in alternate segments by a chord in alternate segment are equal but the first angle is the angle between the chord and the tangent. That angle between the chord and the tangent is equal to the angle subtended by that chord in the other, that is the alternate segment. For that reason, angle DBC is equal to angle BED as indicated. With that in mind, you can be able to do a few questions because this is mainly the, the only new concept you learn about uh, angle properties of a circle. It's the only new one you learn here. So, uh, angles in alternate segments are equal. You can prove that by construction. Maybe we'll do that later, but that's the truth. So with that concept, you can do one or two questions in this area. Let's see. I would like you to attempt this question. In the figure below, it's a circle center O, A or C is a straight line, PB is a tangent at B, um, and angle PBC is 35. Uh, Giving results in each answer, find the size of angle BDC and also angle ACB. You can pause, uh, do the question, and I would like you to post your answer in the group. Uh, when you do it, post in the group. When you find that somebody has posted the same answer, you don't have to post yours. Just um, concur, post another answer. If, 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 if one person posts an answer and you agree with it, it's okay. Just say I agree and then we move on. Uh, today's assignment, I would like you to attempt the questions in KMF mathematics from this topic. Uh, since the year 2006 to 2019. May God bless you. May God bless the work of your hands. Thank you.